without a trace. Fickle hints come and go, as does the path ahead. These stars have twinkled above Terra since ancient times. Just how many romantic mists and searching gazes do they hold? Astrologers spend their lives assigning symbols to constellations and celestial bodies to give them meaning, while shamans and druids try to interpret the trails left by every passing meteor. They are untouchable. Indeed, it is precisely because of that, oh, it is precisely because of this that the sky has become the true home of those who indulge in fantasy. And for this great land, looking up holds no meaning. Six thousand one hundred fifty two point thirty two meters, the height of Terra Sky. And also the last record of the rights, final flight. No one has questioned this limit. Nobody is angry, confused, or curious about it. People live on this pea wrap so softly in its pod and couldn't care any less. And thus came the shabby poem from an ursine poet centuries ago Starpod. <laughs> A romantic name for the barrier. I've read through every paper related to the subject of barriers, those sloppy theories formulated by Victorian and Lithuanian scholars. Analysis on pressure in space, theory on density differentials between the barrier and outside matter, old, outdated, and full of holes. These Colombian academics announcing their pioneer spirit merely tinker with that garbage. And then you get the occasional novel theory put out by younger scholars in academic journals. But they spend way more energy getting tenure and research grants than looking at the sky. Oh, by the way, the test platform we launched the other day has already fallen back to the ground due to the same old problems with the barrier. The sudden change in basic aerodynamics, massive disruption to the original zone, and the extremely rapid decay of exogenous power. What about the results of the data analysis from the transmitter? The batch from the readjusted ones are solid. I've also laid out all the energy cables and connected them to the port you mentioned previously. But Kristen, you're well aware of just how much energy you'll need for this. Theory is sound, however. That won't be a problem. All right. The test platform's crash landing has caused some trouble, and the military is burning with anxiety over your disappearance. Kristen, whatever the next step may be, death might be the most merciful outcome. I wouldn't even consider that a price to pay at all. Nasty? Do you like stargazing? No. Staring at something out of reach just makes me feel empty. And yet, sometimes the unreachable can become a signboard for you. You were indeed right on one thing. Death is the only merciful outcome. Then I hope you don't die before giving me what you promised, Control. You should be more careful. Thank you. I will. Colonel, how am I supposed to take this order? Let me guess. The agent you sent to watch Kristen has gone MIA. And you've suppressed the news? Your superiors aren't worried about your agents being silenced by Kristen. But rather, they might have signed on with her and betrayed the country. They're probably even wondering... Have you betrayed the country too? It's no wonder you've been racing to find Kristen. 
My last tour was in Boulevard. In the late 40s, the coalition government backed by the DOD was bumbling around like toddlers in its own jurisdiction. And our intervention policy for the Bolivian Civil War was deemed a failure. The DOD's rep has fallen so low in the, lo in the eyes of our people. The general even handed over control of the armed forces. The DOD needs ARC-01 to restore its image and re regain the trust of the people. And I also need it to prove myself worthy of plucking the general's medals out of the dust. So yeah, it is my last chance. But you can lay off the clownery for now, Ferdinand. Come on, Colonel. Who are you even trying to fool with all that? This isn't even enough of a reason for the DoD to go so far. And definitely not enough to stake your life on it. Hey. Don't you always brag about being as smart as Kristen? Why not use that clever scientist brain of yours and figure it out? It's not like you don't know a thing about Kristen. Surely you ran a thorough check on her before handing the project over. The situation is pretty bad. But there's definitely a contingency plan at work. Your reactions have been abnormal anyway. If your people haven't gone crazy, then it only comes down to this. Kristen isn't the actual reason. No. She's just a fuse. Ferdinand suddenly looks up at Blake, his eyes full of astonishment. He has come to a conclusion he can barely believe himself. You didn't meet the vice president to talk about Kristen. What you wanted was a mood. The rights were a pair of lunatics, squandering the nation's tax money on ridiculous notions, like challenging the sky. And they all, and, and all they gave back to the country was a little lunatic by the name of Kristen Wright. Ferdinand, I respect men of your caliber. Usually it's your type disrespecting the nation. Am I wrong? I can't imagine a meteor that fell from the sky having any motive beyond an attempt to provoke us. The most generous motive I can imagine is her selling the data to another country. She holds a weapon capable of seriously damaging a nomadic city. And the military handed it right to her. Or worst, she actually wants to avenge her parents. She wants to point Arco-1 right at DC. She plans to destroy the Columbia that, in her eyes, treated her parents so unfairly. We've already seen enough to make people wonder if they were born in the wrong era. Hell, the scarier thing is, doesn't Jackson know about all this? Don't those Maylander agents know too? Guess how much he already knew about Kristen, me, and you before I even walked into his room. But he still chose to put it off. I won't sugarcoat it. From the moment we lost Bolivar, the coalition government has spared no effort in suppressing the military. Our current state of affairs is, to them, an excellent weapon. It doesn't matter if Kristen is exacting revenge or betrayal. What's important is that this is a scandal for the DoD. And the losses brought on by it seems to be an acceptable cost to them. Do you want to be part of that cost, Ferdinand? Do I even get to choose? If you didn't figure it out just now, you might have. So, you, so you can one. Use your connection with me, and just wait till we've recovered Arc 01, when the military will coincidentally be hiring a new scientific advisor. Or two, die here with me, and be swept into the trash can of history together. Ferdinand stares at the soldier before him, confirming he's seen something in the man's eyes. With a pure banter or a real crisis, silence has connected the two. I get it, Colonel. The Vice President has already broadcast live to every citizen that Colombia is about to enter a new era. But accidents are inevitable on the way to said era. I believe he'll dedicate everything he has to realize this for Columbia.
So that's the situation over there, near the Triton factory. The parts regarding Kristen are my own guesswork. Judging by the military's response, that seems to hold enough water. A super weapon that the government hopes to use to reassert power. Or Kristen herself having other plans. Trimounts is indeed working on a secret mega project using energy as it, at its core with unimaginable destructive power yet to be scientifically tested and it's nearing completion that's what I'm worried about as well Saria has there ever been a mass blackout in Trimounts hmm? never Trimounts has separate power grids for residential and commercial use and each of their power reserves alone is enough to allow the facilities in the entire city to operate normally for several months. Moreover, Trimounts has a booming technology industry with dozens of companies dedicated to developing new forms of energy. Nearby mobile industrial platforms regularly borrow energy from the city. Kelsey looks out the window, the skyscraper in, in the distance, which is gigantic glass facade frames a billow of cloud its surface crystal clear like a leaf full of dew drops indeed it is just a leaf her gaze expands and the building quickly disappears into a nest of countless skyscrapers exhibitions on science and technology interspersed with expo halls and other specialized buildings scattered around at random like a bacterial colony in a forest. But as she raises her head, the vast sky dwarfs the city and trimounts is only a leaf. No matter if it's a super weapon ordered by the military or an unknown object that Kristen has other plans for, the amount of energy and precision required for the Horizon Arc project is beyond the scope of our imaginations. Energy consumption and navigation accuracy are issues that they must solve. So you're implying... I don't know how the Colombian military has assessed the situation. Or how Kristen has pulled the wool over their eyes. Even if she were able to solve the issue of precision, my judgment is that it cannot support energy concentration on such a scale. Even if you use all of Trimount's energy reserves... Once you start such a huge project, it should drain Trimount's energy in an extremely short span of time, like stuffing a giant sponge into a glass of water. Even if Kristen's talents and visions are far beyond the present, the current state of science and technology should not be able to realize such a concept. But she is by no means a simple mad scientist indulging her delusions, unless... She has already solved this problem. What the heck are they talking about? Stop eavesdropping. They're gonna find out. It's gotta be about the factory that went kaboom, right? Sorry, you look kind of serious. Does this have something to do with rhyme? Doctor? Is silence in trimounts too? Can we bring her here? Doctor, why are you frowning like that? Oh, I get it. You still blame Kelsey for bringing Rosemontis and me here. We decided to come on our own. I've been here before. I can even be your tour guide. Rosemontis, you're looking at the letter again. Are you okay? He invited me to come back here. The feline girl is still holding that thin envelope in her hands. Five minutes ago, she opened it and quietly read the letter again, before stuffing, stuffing it back inside a minute ago. She lifts her head up to look at you. There doesn't seem to be any particular emotion in her eyes, but you notice something unmistakable nonetheless. She is trying to comfort herself, almost like she is trying to smooth out a small, wrinkled piece of paper under the school desk without attracting anyone's attention. You can feel that she is confused. Maybe even in pain. I forgot again, Doctor. Can coming back here help me remember what I forgot? 
What did I forget? I should have written it down. I'm sure I know. You know, Rosemontis, why don't we take a little nap? If it hurts, we can go back to Rhodes Island right now. I think I should stay. Control your power. Don't force yourself to think, okay? I'm here. Me too! Freaking Ifrit. <laughs> Do you have the data I need? We have a little time to spare, but these should help. The energy sections, project and construction plans, and reports from the past 10 years. Energy and original Mart sections experiment records. The scientific investigation sections, expedition, reports, and data archives. It's a lot thicker than I imagined. Their position was in Rhine Lab is rather unique. From the cooperative perspectives of cost performance and efficiency, their contributions to the company are negligible. They shouldn't even be one of Ryan's 10 sectors. And even though it doesn't rival what the core laboratories like energy and structural get, the budget that Ryan Lab allocates to polar field research and surveying technologies every year is no small amount. In fact, you could say they're throwing huge amounts of money at them. They collect and analyze seismic data from the Casimiran highlands, surrounded by mountains in regular intervals, and have built close to 10, sp ten scientific research stations in the endless ice fields of Sami. They frequently travel to Columbia, uh, Columbia's Great Lakes, as well as the lowland deserts in the south for their investigations, and even seek to thoroughly explore the ruins of the abandoned cities in the bleached wasteland. Only a few know that the dust kicked up by pioneering young Columbia is much older than the sands of Sargon. These scientists have not been measuring the boundaries of this world in the spirit of exploration. Rather, they are looking for something. These last few pages are all about trimounts. Trimounts? Why would scientific in investigation need to factor in the location of headquarters? Every project I've checked so far has an immediate sign-off from Ryan Control. Kristen. And so, did this farce just happen to take place in Trimounts? Or maybe, it could only happen here. I would prefer to see some evidence rather than hear more of your roundabout explanations. I have some rough conjectures, but the clues are all a mess and our present information is inadequate to serve as actual evidence. Let's take a short break. You should go have another chat with Sifrit. Angry howling. I'm not gonna howl. <laughs> Get down, Kelsey. It appears we are under attack. How is it? Does it fit? It's a new see the original Mart section develop. I made a few adjustments, and it should fit you okay now. And I'm sure you know how to test out the new drone equipment. Yes. Come here, and let me help you put, on, put the contacts in. Okay. That'll do it. Stand up and take a look around. Great! You're like a completely different person. How are the contacts? I'm not quite used to them yet. But it's nice to go without weight on my nose. I have to say, you look sharper without your glasses. I'm sure your friends will be shocked as soon as they see you. I'd rather surprise them another way. Such as... Say... My personality. You seize the day and work towards that. Don't underestimate what a little makeover can accomplish. I'll try my best. Besides, the lockdown isn't going to end anytime soon. 
The soldiers stopped you once, and it won't be easy to get around now that they've seen you. Get a makeover and upgrade your equipment while you're at it. Two fouls with one stone. Thank you. It doesn't look like anyone's been here the last couple days. You came to D District 13 for a reason today. I actually bought this place as a vacation home, but with how busy my workers have been lately, I haven't had much time to rest. HR director and all. I just located a transmitter from Site 359 near the scene. Are you here to recover it? What does transmitter have to do with the Triton factory explosion? No. Dorothy wouldn't need a low-level researcher like me if you were already on the case. Ferdinand is out of the picture, but maybe there are other sections. You want transmitter for the experiments? I also saw Saria there. Just how many Rhine Lab personnel are involved in this? You're asking too many questions in one go, silence. And unfortunately, I can't answer them. You should be well aware of Rhine Lab's organizational structure. The departments under general affairs are only responsible for providing support to the scientific research sections. Revision of art, energy, or whatever. Human resource investigation has never interfered in any of their research projects. I've never been a researcher myself, after all. My mentor told me some stories about you and Control. Before joining Rain Lab, you were the most eccentric and yet the most successful inventor in Trimounts. You've never attended a single meeting, read a proposal, or listened to a project briefing, but the projects you endorse always miraculously succeed. There's no need for you to be attached to a company. On the contrary, he said, you might even become a tech pioneer to steer the course of the nation. But after Control had one meeting with you, you announced you were joining Ryan Lab the very next day. The business world is always brimming with delicately packaged myths and legends. The outside world is full of speculation, but at my age, I don't, I don't Kristen to promise me anything. What? I only wanted to stay and watch her patch up a few regrets. Some her own, and some mine. And well, that girl. I'm not exactly, I'm not sure exactly. <laughs> I'm so bad at reading. <laughs> I'm not sure where exactly she is now. You performed very well at Site 359. You cleaned up after Dorothy and followed the trail all the way here to recover the transmitter. Honestly, that's remarkable. But the Site 359 incident ends here. And whatever follows is already beyond the scope of both your responsibilities and abilities. You're done here. What if I disagree, Director Jara? Oh, let's not be rash now. I have no intention of getting in your way. I don't understand. You won't tell me the truth. So why are you still helping me? Do you remember your first day at work? You're so reserved. But you still managed to talk non-stop for half an hour. I was only responsible for checking your background and qualifications, you know. While I handled that, Parvis had already scoured your employment exam. It was high numbers. Then why didn't you interrupt me? Because you're such an earnest woman, Silence. I have a lot of respect for serious scientists. Same as Ryan Lab. No matter how far Kristen and the go... No matter how, uh, no matter what Ryan Lab may become, we'll always need young people like you to take over the reins someday. You are Ryan's future. As HR director, my job is to protect our employees as best I can. So I advise you to leave now. But if you have to see it all happen with your own eyes, to make your preparations and choices, then I won't hold you back either. That's all. Then, I'll earnestly inform you that I'm going to continue my investigation. <coughs> Rosemontis! The very moment the impact force reaches you, you instinctively take the feline girl's hand. Evidently, 
She mistakes it for you being agitated about something. She relaxes her tightly clenched fists, carries you in her arms, and starts running away. But she picked us up? <laughs> At the same time, the fiery Savra girl dashes in the other direction, her flames howling. Leave this to me! Rosmontis, you protect the doctor. I'll melt all these big metal things with my flames. Out of the way, you fret. The shadow steps in front of Ifrit. A thick wall of calcium crystals unfolds before her in an instant, blocking the power armor's onslaught. A burst of intense clashing fills the room, leaving a low, lingering hum in the air. Saria! We don't know what's going on. Let it go. Doctor, are you hurt? I'm fine. All the data are destroyed. A distraction, and then immediate retreat. The enemy had a clear objective. There are many who know about this hideout. And there are even fewer who would stand against us. It was Ryan Lab's mass-produced remote armors that carried out this attack. Is it someone from Ryan Lab then? That's not for certain. The military has already infiltrated Ryan Lab. And decisively eliminating unknown factors in their plans as more their style. Anyway, you seem to be on the right track. There are people who wish for us to not go any deeper than this. Or perhaps we've been going the wrong way and someone is trying to get us to continue our investigation. What is certain, at the very least, is that we have hit a critical point somewhere. No matter who they are, the people behind us will pay the price. You're angry, Saria. Don't let anger cloud your judgment. If Kristen has already solved their any troubles and cut ties with the military, then we must hurry and find the energy core she's relying on. It shouldn't be too far from the shaft under military control. I already have a few conjectures based on my recent findings. I'll try to look for it but I require more information. I need to head back to Ryan. I'll go with you, Saria. Don't be silly. I can't watch you right now. If you're here and you can't leave Trimounts for the time being, you should spend time with the doctor. Don't go anywhere. But the bad guys came to our doorstep looking for trouble. Besides, I helped the doctor. You should. No. You did great. Be extra careful when I'm not around. Take care of the doctor. And don't let yourself get hurt. You aren't talking. The room is quiet. I don't really want to talk. Are you bored? Not really. I'm just not used to it. Ifrit has been frowning from the moment they got back to their room. Or more accurately, from the moment they left Saria. There are several intricate geometric, geometric shapes scattered on the table. It's a scale model of cities like Trimounts given to guests by the hotel for free. Rosmontis and Efret sit on opposite corners of the sofa, chatting on and off sporadically. You look at the children, but do not interrupt. You want to try building trimouts again? It's really tough. It took me so long last time. I've done it twice already. Oh, so fast? I remember. I wrote it down. There are a few really hard steps. And there are a few city blocks packed with buildings. They all look alike, so it's easy to get them mixed up. 
but I have written it down. Do you always write things down? Yep. I could forget them if I don't. What did you write down? Mind telling me? Doctor? Amia? Dr. Kelsey? Blaze? Weedy? And some people and things farther away. A long corridor. I got lost. My brothers aren't much older than me. But I can always count on them. They come to look for me in no time. And they pat my head. And tell me I have nothing to be afraid of. They have scars that look alike. On the back of their heads too. Like the marks I made to group flowers together last night. Brothers? You don't look so good. Relax. Don't think no more. I'm in a little better shape than you, but not by much. If only we could choose to. Re if only we could choose what we remember. I keep on remembering the noisy, buzzing machines, the room all painted white. Layer after layer. It's like they built them like that to mess with me. Just thinking about it pisses me off. But I want to remember what Silence and Saria told me. And what they did, too. So you're all sulky because of what just happened? Because Saria? Maybe she's worried you'd get hurt. Dr. Kelsey didn't let the doctor go with her to look for the Ark 01 either. Silence won't let me see Saria. And Saria won't let me follow her and help her out. Maybe they aren't worried I'd muck, muck things up. Maybe they just... They think they didn't protect me well enough before. Or maybe they think I'm still a kid who only knows how to throw a fit. You have a point. But I super hate this feeling. I think... I get it. You do? Yep. When I left Rhodes Island... Blaze and Weedy kept trying to talk me out of it. Blaze almost burnt the letter. Ami and Dr. Kelsey let me go in the end. But I could tell they didn't actually want me to come back to Columbia. They were really worried. Maybe just like Saria. Adults are all like that. But I want to remember the things I've forgotten. Even if I'll lose even more. I'm right to come back. It's the one thing I'm sure of. You have a better memory than I do. But that must mean you know what you have to do more than I do. That's exactly what I mean. You and I, the two of us came back to Columbia. The trimounts of our own choosing. And we both have things we have to do. Whew. Now I feel much better. Rosamontis, once this is all over... Let's do some touring with the doctor. Let's go out and have a look around town. What do you think? The sky over Trimounts is usually pretty gloomy. It's really special that it's so clear. I could be a tour guide. Oh, wait. You already built Trimounts twice. You know this place better than I do. Hmm. Okay. Is Kelsey back? I'll go get the door. It's you. You're the tin man who ate, a f who ate four big-ass hot dogs in one go. <laughs> That's the important part. Bro had four hot dogs. Get the glizzy gobbler over here. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Finally made it out of District 13. I'll have to thank Director Jara for the new equipment. The drone's rotor is probably made of some high-performance optic optical material. Its camouflage ability has increased greatly. And the surveillance range has doubled. Now what's next? This is my only clue. It doesn't matter where it leads me. As long as it brings me closer to the truth.
The transmitter's response has been growing stronger ever since I approached District 9. If I remember correctly, the park right here should be closed due to some government planning issues. Irregular geometric shapes of silver float slowly in the air, accompanied by the buzz of a high-frequency hum. It is another transmitter, but it seems to be slightly different than the one in her hand. And silence could not make out what specific differences were. An aged Caprine in the middle of the room nods slightly, as if he had heard someone call him. The transmitter draws a huge arc in the air as it lands on his shoulder. Long time no see, Silence. You look well. Silence pulls the excited transmitter back into her arms and slowly walks towards the other party. Professor, made it all the way here from Site 359. You're so much braver than you were before. But I never thought the man I found would be you. I heard you helped Dorothy. Very good. Ferdinand is too hungry for success. Dorothy is an extremely obstinate woman. Things might not have ended as they did without you. You... I know you have many questions you want to ask. But first, ask me that crystalline unit over there. Silence picks up the experimental instrument next to her, walks over to Parvis, and puts it down where his finger is pointing. She connects the unit to the operating terminal's port, and Parvis is already seated in front of the monitor without even glancing at her, as a slew of complex equations frantically calculate themselves on the display. Only when Silent stands up does she realize that he had given the order as naturally as she has executed it. I'm a busy man, and you've done well, very well to find me here. So I'll tell you whatever you want to know. Are you all using transmitter? Indeed. What exactly is it using, being used for? The transmitter is extremely sensitive to micro vibrations. It can receive and encode nerve signals. And Dorothy hoped that it would replace traditional arts units, becoming a brand new medium that would allow everyone equipped to it to be completely equal individuals. And Ferdinand intends to use, it, use its superorganism characteristics to manufacture super equipment that can accurately de deliver weapons across vast distances. So you know everything that happened at Site 359? Parvis does not answer. Silence carefully observes her professor's expression. It is not as if he is trying. But it is as if. It is not as if. <laughs> he is not trying to avoid it. Or is bored by the question. But rather. It is not even worth answering at all. So. If you knew about their research all along, then. Whose side are you on? Dorothy's? Ferdinand's? Or Control's? Or is it as my colleagues in the break room once said, the director of structural is an old goat, who's a permanent smile on his face who always chooses whatever is most convenient for him. I'm not on any particular side, Silence. I help them because both Ferdinand and Dorothy are hard workers. Use. Full of ideal and his enthusiasm. Same goes for you. Whoever I don't support is due to their mediocre capacity as scientists. Me included. We are, un we are unable to transcend this mediocre and feeble era. What about you? What do you intend to do with the transmitter? That's enough silence. It's, it's that I'm unwilling to answer you. But this question exceeds your level of understanding. 
I think it's supposed to say it's not that I'm unwilling to answer you. Anyways, I have much to do. And like the luxury of time to tell you everything from the very beginning. Though you may stay, you are one of my best students after all. Soon, we shall have the most ideal environment for our experiment. One that meets all our material requirements and catalyt catalytic conditions. So now, we must prepare ourselves for it. It will be the most disruptive experiment in history. And you will bear witness to the birth of true greatness. It is neither short-sighted nor feeble. It will transcend every limit there is and save us all from mediocre progress. This is the real and rightful promise of science itself. The pioneers at Site 359, the workers at the Triton factory. Professor, your research has hurt many innocent people. Will it harm even more? Is this science silence? As scientists, we need only consider one thing, and one thing alone, and that is how to accomplish it. That alone is more than enough to exhaust us. Parvis is speaking very calmly, or precisely. He even sounds a little distracted. The equation on the se screen seems to have, uh, have to do with the transmitter. Parvis never turns to look at silence. His eyes are fixated only on the equation. Silence can tell very clearly what it is that she is feeling right this moment. Anger. She clenches her fist. I see. No wonder I couldn't get in touch with Sari or Kelsey. Dr. Rain. I can task you with this matter all the same. I heard about what happened from Kelsey. It's been a long time. When last we met. Uh, speaking of. Are you afraid of me because of the way I look? You've been staring for a bit. Uh, <laughs> the third one is so goofy. Do you get arthritis? Do you put WD-40 on your joints? You've changed, doctor. Back on topic. We don't have much time given your condition. There's not much catching up to do. The Maylander Foundation wishes for Rhodes Island to help us stop the military from assassinating the vice president. Hold up, there's an assassination plot going on? Doctor, you don't seem surprised. We've just got this piece of intel ourselves. Tomorrow, Jackson will visit Ryan Lab. And that's when Blake will make his move. No doubt Kelsey has already gone over the Horizon Art Project with you. So I won't touch on that. Rhodes Island should be on the same side as the Maylander Foundation in this. It's a promise that Kelsey made to me. And it is also the prerequisite of your entry into Trimounts. Assist the melee and the foundation in stopping the army's absurd act of treason. You can see this as an order, Doctor. Uh, you weren't here to find the vice president some bodyguards, are you? This is a pharmaceutical company, sir. You're still as calm and sharp as ever. That matches the impression I had of you. Right. The Maylander Foundation is already allocating our resources to ensure Vice President Jackson's safety. But that alone will not stop the military's plan. One of the events after the press conference includes a visit to Ryan Lab. His entire trip that day will be broadcast live. If his assassins and our agents come to blows before the public, it doesn't matter if the assassination itself is successful or not. Blake will still have a reason to declare martial law and take over Tramounts. 
just like District 13 right now. Neither I nor Mainland there likes it when the enemy has all their eggs in one basket. Because that's always an omen of the collapse to come. You're going to leave this to me? Just like that? This is an official request that Maylander is making to Rhodes Island. You are the doctor of Rhodes Island. If Kelsey continues to have her faith in you, I have no reason to doubt your abilities. Time is a waste, doctor. I hope you will cooperate with us well. Oh boy. Maybe I should get in touch with Saria. Doctor, let me and Rosemontes catch the hitman who's after the vice president. Kelsey's still looking for the entrance to the Arco 1 thing, and Saria's gone back to Ryan Lab to look for data. Doctor, we have to get on this right now. Are you still treating me like a kid? Like sorry in silence. Doctor, you brought me on so many successful missions now. In two more years, I'll get I'll get to apply to become an elite operator. Oh, Rosemontis is already elite. Anyway, if you're going to lock me up in the hotel room... I'm just wondering what kind of mission I should assign you. Operator Ifrit. <laughs> hey, watch where you're going. You're going to get hit by a car spacing out like that. Let me leave you with a little advice. Research your silence. You may think helping Anthony is the right thing to do, but that couldn't be further from the truth. It's silly to think that Simon Co. was just a victim in their fight with Hyde Bro. They were fighting because they were hellbent on bringing down the other side. It's just that Old Smith didn't play the game as well as his opponent. In other words, if Smith managed to make his move before Hydebro, it would have been the Hydes hunkering down in Bunker Hill right now instead of his family. From th that point of view, is Anthony really just a victim? But what do you think, Anthony? I can't deny it. But there are no ifs in this world. I know that. I'm telling you all this because I want you to understand something. If you want to do the right thing, you need to first be able to tell what's actually right. You need to understand that doing the right thing doesn't necessarily mean you don't have a price to pay. It's not just energy and original art. I can't tell you where this trail will lead and how many people will end up dragging up into this mess. But you will no doubt come to see a side of Ryan Lab that you have never known. Be it the Diabolic Crisis or Site 359, you know that Ryan Lab is nowhere near as wonderful as the recruitment videos make it seem. Even then, it may still disgust you. If it comes down to it, you may use my permissions as the director of the original art section. If you use my permissions to do anything else, I will turn a blind eye to that too. Director Franks, I won't... But silence, remember this. Your mission is to recover the batch of transmitters lost at 359. And nothing else. If you run into any obstacles too difficult to over overcome... You are free to give up any time you want. There are some things that, until you find your own answer, you have no power to fight. This is science, silence. As scientists, we need only consider one thing, and one thing alone, and that is how to accomplish it. That alone is more than enough to exhaust us. You're a lot more composed now, but your eyes are the same as back during Hayden 1. Angry over that sick child. 
criticizing me for those minor issues during the procedures, and even blaming science itself. But as I have so often told you, many times in the past, only science can change what needs to be changed. It can advance an entire age, but its progress lies in the hands of a limited few. This is a natural paradox, science, and a paradox simply implies a cost. I have already given you the clues you have been wanting, but silence. What can you do? You don't even know where to start your inquiries. After leaving Parvis's lab, Silent spends the next half hour walking aimlessly along the streets of District 9. She had followed the transmitter all the way here. But what should she be doing now? What could she even do? Stop her own mentor? Find control and beg the truth from her? She was right. How could she stop anyone if she doesn't even know where to begin? She's angry, but anger itself holds no meaning whatsoever. Holy shit! Hey, you! The beery chick! Out of the way! At a perfectly regular intersection in Trimouts District 9, a driver anxiously confronts, uh, confirms the current time. He needs to get to his destination within the next 10 minutes to block off a difficult client in time and allow the other party to sign the contract. But in the next second, he feels as if he is suddenly on a roller coaster ride, as if invisible slopes had formed with the air, and his car climbs, turns, accelerates, and turns into a cannonball. Uh, please don't crash into silence. Water. Drops of water suddenly appear and chain the car's wheels to a halt. And the out of control vehicle seems to almost graze silence as it slides past her, scorching the tarmac with a shrill sound. Half the road is completely drenched, as if it has only just rained. Uh, are you okay? S sorry, I, I have no idea what just happened. Silence. Trimount says a ton of cars on the road. You can get run over if you keep spacing out like that. Director Mulesis? Just now. I'm just passing by. No need to thank me. By the way, when did you piss off that psycho? Knowing what she's capable of. She might have been more direct than messed up with the air. Looks like it was the prank she pulled while she was at it. What are you talking about? Never mind. Nothing that crazy woman surprises me anymore. Huh? Silence? When did you change into this new uniform? The material looks great and it fits you perfectly. You look like a completely different person. I almost couldn't tell it was you. Speaking of which, I didn't recognize Iffy either. She's got new threads. And she's so much taller now. Ifrit? What is Ifrit doing in Trimounts? She's with Rhodes Island's doctor. The doctor is here too? Huh? I thought you two were here together. Mulesis' surprise expression is very vivid. To the point that Silence immediately realizes what she is here for. There is no doubt that Mulesis is doing this out of kindness. The games that the higher-ups are playing are, are too dangerous. And she is trying to get this lowly researcher to stay away from my lab while this is going on. Hayden 1 Laboratory, Site 359, Triton Factory, Parvis, Dorothy, Chara, Mulesis. She has stumbled her way to this point. How many obstacles will she have to face? All of a sudden, silence is struck with a sense of helplessness that she has never felt before. Where are Ifra and the doctor? I was only going to have you make some trouble for Blake. 
Never did I expect you to follow the trail to the old goat. The elf saved you. But where will she take But where will she take you now? Oh well. Just a little birdie. No need to worry about her. 